An astonishing court document from the Guantanamo Military Commission a court hearing detainees accused of carrying out the September 2011 terrorist attacks on New York appears to confirm the inconceivable. The paper was first made public through a Guantanamo Bay court docket, although it was heavily blacked. An unexpurgated copy was obtained by independent researchers. It is an account of the commission's chief investigator. The veteran Don Canestra Rose personal investigation into suspected Saudi government complicity in the September 2011 attacks, which he performed at the request of the defendant's counsel. Two of the hijackers were being closely studied by the CIA and may have been recruited by Langley long before they flew planes into the World Trade Center buildings, wittingly or unwittingly. The actions of Nawaf Al-Hazmi and Khalid Al-Mihir in the 18 months preceding the September 2011 attacks are among the many outstanding mysteries of the September 2011 attacks that remain unsolved almost two decades later. Despite being repeatedly designated as possible Al-Qaeda terrorists by the CIA and NSA, the couple entered the United States on multi-entry visas in January 2000. They had just returned from an Al-Qaeda gathering in Kuala Lumpur, when critical aspects of the September 2011 attacks were likely discussed and decided upon. Nonetheless, this background should have been enough to prohibit Hazmi and Mitter from entering the United States, or at the very least alert the FBI to their presence. As it happened, they were accepted without issue for a six-month period at Los Angeles International Airport and the CIA prevented bureau agents with an Alex station from sharing this knowledge with their superiors. We need to inform the bureau about this. These guys are plainly awful. At least one of them possesses a multi-plea entry visa to the United States. We've got to tell the FBI, Alex station member Mark Rossini recalls discussing with his colleagues. However, the CIA told me, no, it's not the FBI's case, it's not the FBI's jurisdiction. Upon arrival, Hazmi and Midher met Omar al Baimi, a Saudi citizen living in California, in an airport cafe. He assisted them in finding an apartment in San Diego, co-signed their lease, paid them $1,500 toward their rent, and connected them to Anwar al-Laghi, an imam at a nearby mosque, during the following two weeks. In 2011, Al Olaghi was assassinated by a United States drone attack in Yemen. Following September 2011, Bayami became a target of the FBI's Operation Encore investigation into possible Saudi complicity in the attacks. In a 2003 interview with Riyadh-based investigators, he said his encounter with Hazmi and Mitter was purely coincidental. He overheard them speaking Arabic, discovered they couldn't speak English, and decided to help them out of kindness. The department arrived at a totally different decision by me was a Saudi knowledge employable and some portion of a more extensive aggressor Wahhabist network in the United States, which dealt with a horde of potential and real psychological militants and checked the exercises of hostile to Riyadh nonconformists abroad. Likewise, Reprise decided there to be a 50 by 50 possibility he had progressed information on the September 2011 assaults before they occurred. Thus did the Saudi government. Those stinner realities stayed stowed away from general visibility until WAC 2022, when a stash of FBI records was declassified in line with the White House. The recently delivered Guantanamo Military Commission recording reveals significantly further insight into Bayami's contact with Hazmi and Midher and thus, the CIA's distinct fascination with them, their exercises all through their visit in the United States, and refusal to unveil their presence to the FBI until late August 2001. The recording is a record by the Commission's lead specialist, the veteran Weir Canestraro of his own test of potential Saudi government association in the September 2011 assaults, directed in line with the litigants attorneys. In view of a survey of characterized data held by, and interviews with delegates of, the FBI and Pentagon, the substance firmly recommends that the CIA blocked official examinations to hide its entrance of Al-Qaeda. 
That is the judgment of four discreet, anonymous FBI specialists talked with by Canestraro who chipped away at examinations concerning the September 2011 assaults. The most combustible charges were evened out by a department specialist alluded to in his report as CS23, who had broad information on counterterrorism and counterintelligence matters. CS23 related how the CIA more than once lied and stalled the FBI in its examinations concerning by me. For instance, while organization authorities professed to have no documents on him when asked by activity reprise delegates, CS23 knew beyond a shadow of a doubt this was a misrepresentation and the CIA kept a few functional records on by me, adding up to a broad documentation. Moreover, CS23 was sure that the CIA utilized its contact relationship with the Saudi Insight administrations to endeavor to enlist Hazmi and Mitter and evade regulations restricting the organization from leading spying procedure on United States soil by involving Riyadh as a go-between. This record was upheld by another FBI specialist, CS3, who further cases that by me setting up ledgers and leasing a loft for the two robbers in San Diego was finished at the command of the CIA. Any data gave to by me would then be taken care of back to Alex Station. CS3 felt it odd that the CIA unit, arranged in the United States and staffed by examiners, was engaged with enlisting Al-Qaeda agents, as such work is normally the obligation of case officials prepared in clandestine activities based abroad. CSEO agreed that this course of action was exceptionally uncommon and made it almost unthinkable for Alex Station to foster witnesses within Al-Qaeda from its base a few thousand miles from the nations where Al-Qaeda was associated with working. Regardless of such enticing leads, CS23 cases senior FBI authorities stifled further examinations concerning the CIA's relationship with Bayoumi and the enlistment of Hazmi and Mitter, and agency delegates affirming before the Joint Senate and legislative investigation into September 2011 were told not to uncover the full degree of Saudi contribution with Al-Qaeda. As far as it matters for them, CS3 expressed that before they and their partners were evaluated by the joint request, CIA authorities inside Alex Station told them not to coordinate completely with specialists and they were hoping to hang somebody for September 2011. Canestraro makes no ends concerning why the CIA disguised crucial data from the FBI preceding the assaults, which possibly might have forestalled their execution and why the department in this manner cooperated with the organization's cover-up. Albeit one response is given by the uncommon idea of Alex Station's arrangement. Specifically, that a long way from pennant raiding an Al-Qaeda cell to deflect psychological oppression, the office was trying to impact and direct its exercises to cause illegal intimidation outside standard enrollment channels. Having coincidentally found such a gigantic intrigue, the FBI would have known well to let the whole subject well be, 